I made this circuit a few days ago. The two transistor square wave oscillator with a variable frequency that could be set with the help of this potentiometer. And it is 250k, this potentiometer, this resistor is 2k2 in this demo video. Of course it will also work with these two values anyway. And I tried to find a um, practical application for that. <coughs> and I did some experiments and more or less by luck I found that I could use the circuit to uh, make inductance visible. And that's the reason why you see here this circuit. Uh, it's well known that in a transistor, you see that on the left upper side, the phase on the, the phase of the signal that's available on the collector and the emitter differs. And you can see that here, especially that's the reason why such a circuit is used in audio amplifiers, uh, the NPN transistors and the PMP transistors when they are used in an audio amplifier get their proper phase, their audio signal in a proper phase um, supplied. And my aim, my idea was to use that uh, effect. And of course I had to mount a resistor here of 1K and here 1K. I found that the oscillator did work somewhat different anyway, that, that doesn't uh, matter much. And we, because we have here a different phase, when we send these signals into the oscilloscope, um, that will have um, an effect and the reason is that we can see on the oscilloscope the difference. And that's often used in the past and nowadays to make for instance the properties of uh, transistors, capacitors, diodes visible. Um, there is a relation between uh, the voltage on uh, the horizontal and the voltage on the a vertical uh, channel. And that's what I used here. I hope it's visible. I take up my camera now. Uh, here you see some coils that I used that I want to test in this video. This big coil on that glass jar, high inductance uh, coil on say 22 kilohertz. This is a typical shortwave coil. Here a kind of a choke coil. An iron pin wound with a 0.4 millimeter copper wire. A typical shortwave coil. A piece of uh, ferrite rod. And this is a typical shortwave coil works on say 14 megahertz or 18 megahertz with a parallel capacitor of a few uh, picofarad. And here also a, another coil that I made. This coil, coil is now in the test and this is the circuit that I showed. And here is that potentiometer with which you can change the frequency and I have to say the frequency for this test is very low in this range and when you want, don't want to believe me I switch the the signal tracer on and that shows that the frequency is very low in this uh, test circuit for coils and uh, anyway uh, every coil uh, has a certain um, property and that is when it is kicked into resonance and after that um, it's no longer kicked into that resonance so the, the voltage or whatever stops 
it swings out on a certain frequency. And all these coils have that effect. And here you see that effect on the oscilloscope. So this is a way you can test, change the coil and see what happens, uh, how that coil uh, acts, how it swings out. And now I change the frequency somewhat. And there's always a relation between the inductance and the oscilloscope picture. But of course, when the coil has a very low inductance, let's see what happens then. Perhaps it will be very difficult. This coil has a very low inductance. It's a typical shortwave coil. Say it's a 5 microhenry, 2 microhenry, perhaps 7, I don't know. But that's the range where we have to search the inductance value of this coil. So I connect it now. I hope it's visible. To the test circuit. And let's see whether we can find some kind of effect. Of course the best test is to shortcut the test clips and um, of course then the oscilloscope must show nothing. But this wire here also has an inductance. So let's do that first. That's interesting. Shortcut of the test clips. What do we see? We also see kind of inductive effect. But let's now connect the coil. And see what happens. And we have more or less the same effect, but it is so much stronger. Of course, you can amplify. I do that now. I amplify it with the scope. And here we have a kind of bird situation. Perhaps also interesting. Does this happen? When we shortcut our test circuit probe, probes of our test circuit. Well, now we, now we have shortcutted the probes, and this is the effect. So it differs of the inductive effect of the coil. And that's also more or less all that I wanted to show. This is a typical shortwave coil for the frequency band between 2 MHz and say, oh, sorry, 7 MHz and 2 MHz. Let's connect it to the probes. And this is what we see now. Limit the amplification somewhat. And we can see the inductive effects of the coil be kicked into oscillation and after a short moment uh, it swings out on a certain frequency. Uh, don't expect a scientific uh, explanation. These are the things that I know and perhaps um, other people can give a better explanation in a more scientific way. So this is perhaps interesting. This big coil was made for 22 kilohertz. Let's see what happens when we connect it to the test probes. This effect is very clear. You see the burst that this coil gives and how it swings out on, I don't know the frequency, but I think it's approximately 
20 kilohertz or so, perhaps 30 kilohertz. So a simple circuit to make uh, inductive effects visible. And that's the only aim of this video. You can see more or less what happens when you have made a coil and um, test that coil with this, this circuit. LX coil under test. Square F oscillator. In fact a very low frequency, but it works. And here the two important connections. One is to the collector, one to the emitter. The collector lead goes to the horizontal channel input. And the uh, uh, ground wire of the um, uh, vertical input goes to the top of the 1K resistor. And the other wire uh, of the uh, vertical input is also connected to the top of the coil under test.